May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable always unto you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Two of today's readings feature widows. Some of you may have been widowed or may have been brought up by a widowed mother. You will know how hard it can be. I have not been a widow, but I was separated and had to raise my two boys on my own for a few years until I met my second husband. The story about the widow from Zarephath has three main points that jump out for me. First, she was a Gentile. Zarephath is in Sidon, and this was the territory of Jezebel, Elijah's enemy. This means that Elijah was the first prophet to bring God's message to the Gentiles. Second, the widow knew who he was and knew that he worshipped a God different from her own. As the Lord your God lives, she said. She was acknowledging God's power. She had faith, even without belonging to the Jewish culture and religion. Third, she is so humble that she brings the water that Elijah requests and doesn't say anything about her plight. But when he asks to share her meager supplies, she makes her dire situation known to him. He immediately reassures her, do not be afraid. What compassionate words. I can relate to that widow from Zarephath. I know what it was like to look in the cupboard and find there was nothing there. In fact, this reading used to be very comforting to me in those days. I sense Elijah and God saying to the widow, what do you have? He is asking her to look at what she does have. In her case, only a little flour and a few drops of oil, rather than looking at what she doesn't have. He could say, is the glass half full or half empty? The widow has very little, but she agrees to share it, and in this obedience to God's prompting, she is blessed. Her faith is a blessing, and the provision for her is a blessing. She doesn't miraculously have a whole pantry full of food, but what she has never runs out. And she is able to survive and support her child while the rest of her country is in the grip of a God different from her own. As the Lord your God lives, she said, she was acknowledging God's power. She had faith, even without belonging to the Jewish culture and religion. Third, she is so humble that she brings the water that Elijah requests and doesn't say anything about her plight. But when he asks to share her meager supplies, she makes her dire situation known to him. He immediately reassures her, do not be afraid. What compassionate words. I can relate to that widow from Zarephath. I know what it was like to look in the cupboard and find almost nothing there. In fact, this reading used to be very comforting to me in those days. I see Elijah and God saying to the widow, What do you have? He is asking her to look at what she does have. In her case, only a little flour and a few drops of oil, rather than looking at what she doesn't have. He could say, Is the glass half full or half empty? The widow has very little, but she agrees to share it. And in this obedience to God's prompting, she is blessed. Her faith is a blessing, and the provision for her is a blessing. She doesn't miraculously receive a whole pantry full of food. I'm sure she thought that would be nice. But what she has never runs out. And she is able to survive and support her child, while the rest of the country is in the grip of a famine. What can this reading be saying to us? Well, I believe it is a challenge to look for the blessings in life, to look for what you don't have and not, sorry, to look for what we do have and not to focus on what we don't have. Many of you here in Longview suffer from the pains and illnesses of old age. You have lost a lot of your health. But what do you still have? Do you have your faith? What can you still do? These are questions this reading asks of all of us. Our Luke reading also features a widow, and in this case, her only son had just died. In the first century, a widow was supported by her children. 
and by losing her son, she was doomed to be destitute. It's a terrible thing to lose a child, but in her case, there was also her future to be fearful of. But Jesus had compassion on her. He didn't need to ask her why she wept or what he could do for her. There was only one thing that could change her life for the better. And Jesus restored the young man back to life, giving his mother not only her dear son back, but also her dignity and her support. The young man reacted in the most natural way. He began to speak. I wonder what he said. Mum, I've just had the strangest dream. Where, where am I? Mum, why are you crying? Perhaps he said those things. Maybe he knew what had happened and began to praise and thank God for his restored life. We'll never know. This was a very public event and Jesus' reputation grew throughout the land. What is this reading saying to us? It's saying that Jesus is compassionate, that he knows our needs before we can even utter them to him. He is always available and we can always come to Jesus in prayer. The faith of the widow from Zarephath and the compassionate care she received are echoed in the widow from Nain. Our reading also tells us that God cares for the people on the outskirts, and that can mean the Gentiles in the Jewish context. He cares for all the poor, the humble, the widow, the young man cut off as life was beginning. He knows our faith, even when no one else does. He is not just interested in the powerful, the healthy, wealthy, young and glamorous. Just as well, really. Most of the world doesn't fit into those categories. Whoever you are, whatever condition you are in, God loves you. And that's why he sent Jesus to the earth, so that you can live with him forever.